in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. Our Lady of Lords, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're continuing with volume 15, 7, uh, 11, 19, 23. And we're at the second paragraph here. So this is where we're going to begin. Jesus says, Ah, Luisa, you do not know. You do not know how much I had to give you in order to dispose your capacity so that I might deposit my divine will in you. So here Jesus is saying this to Luisa. And he's also saying it to us. You don't understand what I had to do in order to dispose you. We are rebellious. We are a fallen nature. Uh, Jesus has redeemed us. Uh, and yet, uh, he says, I had to prepare you. So e in each of our lives, how did he prepare Louisa? It was through suffering. Uh, she suffered the most next to any human next, next to the Blessed Mother, who suffered more than any human next to Jesus. So here are the three that suffered the most, Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. He says, uh, you don't know how much I had to do to give you, in order to dispose your capacity, to expand your capacity, that I, God, might deposit in you this great gift from the divine will. So now we're going to get a glimpse of why Louisa, out of all the, all the saints, why Louisa? He said, I, Jesus, had to remove from you any seed of corruption. So here is, this is, she is, she wasn't born without original sin. But, but because of her sufferings, he had to get rid of corruption, the seed of corruption. I had to purify your soul. I had to purify your very nature in such a way that Neither do you feel anything for corruption or for your, your, your human nature, nor do they have for you. Because since the seed is missing, it is, the, it is, is as if the fire were missing to the firewood. So here he says, he's giving us a clue of why everyone, when, when Luisa was alive, they called her Luisa La Santa, Luisa La Santa, the saint. Father Bucci said she is the saint of the divine will. That's what the church is going to discover. Who this Luisa Picaretta is, is going to shock the world. We haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> and when we get to understand Luisa, when we get to uh, turn uh, to realize Luisa, uh, great things are going to happen for us as well. So this, this is what God is waiting for, waiting for us to begin to understand who she is. She's not the mother of God. That's Theotokos. No one can compare to Theotokos, the mother of God. No one can compare to Jesus, the son of God, the new Adam and the new Eve. But the newborn is the one who God has given to us to help us how and why this is going to happen through the book of heaven that Jesus dictated to Louisa. So he says, Louisa, you think it is nothing, therefore you give it no thought. Instead of thanking me, and this is what we want to do, we want to thank God for Louisa. Thank you, Jesus, for Louisa. Instead of occupying yourself with thinking about what I, God, have deposed for you, Louisa, and for those whom I, God, have placed around you. We're nobodies, we're nothings. Yet he has placed us around this newborn. Where's the thank you? Thank you, Jesus, that you've, you've given me not just the divine will, but Louisa, who possesses the divine will and the gift. And while you want to only, and while I want you to only follow my divine will. So Jesus says, thank me, you know, love me. He says, what I have done, I want you to enter into this gift. Begin to understand what I have done for you. I've not done this for the, for the saints. The saints did not have Louisa. He did not place the saints around Louisa. He placed, you know, St. Anna de Francia. But for the, all of humanity, all the good and holy and righteous people, it's, it's, for example, 
he didn't give to David the, the blessed sacrament. He didn't receive the Holy Eucharist. He didn't give to Moses this great outpoint of the Holy Spirit, uh, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, the, the 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit. He didn't give that to Moses. Why? They weren't worthy? No, it wasn't time. Because redemption didn't do, they didn't it didn't take, didn't take place. They didn't have the Blessed Mother as their mother, as their queen. And now Jesus says, now that you have me and my mother, you have the sacraments, you have the sacramentals. He says, you have the Holy Eucharist. He says, you have the Pope. Now he says, I'm going to give you a new beginning for all of humanity. But it's really not new at all. It's what Adam had before the fall. So he says in volume 7, 16, 723, 1923. My daughter, may your first act be to encounter my divine will. Jesus, uh, this is what we do when we pray uh, the, 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 your prevening act in the morning. I want to be fused with you, triune God. I want to be fused with you, Jesus, Mary and Louisa. I want to be, I want to do my acts, my rounds in the divine will. I want to take possession of creation. I want to take possession of redemption. You want them to be mine. I want them to be mine. Why? So I can enter into the prime act of God. So that I can participate in living in the divine will that you, God, want me to. And Jesus goes, why? Because I want to live in my nothingness. I want you to fill me with your everything. I want, I want nothing of earth. I only want that of heaven. When, when, when you begin, he says, the first act be an encounter with my divine will. We want to enter into this. May your first thought, your first heartbeat be to encounter the eternal heartbeat of my divine will. Jesus beat in my heart beating. I don't want my heart beating anymore. Jesus breathe in my breathing. I don't want to breathe humanly anymore. I want you, Jesus, to breathe in my breathing. That you may receive all of my love, Jesus says. Try to make continuous encounters in everything this is your this is your round of creation this is your round of redemption this is how jesus prayed this is how mary prayed this is how adam prayed he, he took all of creation god says this is yours and he breathed it in and he says and i love you with all of this make your first thought your first heartbeat to encounter the eternal heartbeat of god of my most holy divine will and may you receive all the divine love of God. Try to make continuous encounters in everything. Again, that means your rounds throughout the day. That you may be transformed into my divine will and I in yours. No more human will. So as to dispose you to make the final encounter with my divine will at your last hour. That's going to be the greatest. Our last hour is going to be the greatest. If we're, if we're striving for this great gift of the divine will, he says, do it every day to prepare yourself for the final encounter. But what does that mean? He takes us to heaven. In this way, you shall have no painful encounter after your death so that you don't have to go to hell. You won't even have to go to purgatory, Jesus says. That's what he promises Louisa. No, more, no painful encounter after your death. That's why we pray for the holy souls in purgatory every day. We pray for them, that they release, are released soon from their purgation. From see, you go to purgatory when you when you when you're not free of every uh, uh, thing that was opposed to the holy humanity of Jesus. If you're possessing anything that is opposed to the holy humanity of Jesus, it's got to be purged from you. If you can't get get rid of it here on earth. There's the purgation afterwards. You can't get to heaven with any imperfection. Bible 16, 727, 1923. It is necessary that I make a deposit of the goods, the effects, the prodigies, and the knowledges the divine will contains. After I have formed the deposit in you, and he's talking about Louisa, but he's talking about us, then shall it, uh, it make its way um, and shall give itself to other souls so who is the first one to get this is louisa so he says after after the perfection the goods the effects the prodigies the knowledges the deposit in you louisa then others can have this and that's why jesus says when 
you receive everything, I'm going to take you to heaven for a very short period of time. This is what Jesus says, so that you will do everything that a human could possibly do and then return to basically teach. And Louisa says this in volume six, I promise, I swear, I will come back to teach the one that's hopefully us who wants to live in the divine will every month. <laughs> and this is one of the reasons why we try to have a, a, a teaching every month. Louise is going to teach us one day every month. She's going to teach us about this great gift. Read volume six. You'll see it. It's very, very clear. To, in order to give it to us, to other creatures. Therefore, see, everything is prepared. The deposit is almost complete in you, Louisa. There is nothing left but to depose, dispose the first ones in order to make it known that it may not remain without fruit. So as we get to, we're, we are the first ones to, to know about this. Uh, how do we know? In 1996, the writings came out of the Vatican. And Jesus says, when the writings come out, the face of the earth will change. Trans, transmuted, he says. It's going to change very, 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 very powerfully, very, very uh, amazingly. Now, that's what's happening right now for those who are reading. The first ones, we're really the first ones uh, that will receive this fruit that Jesus said to Adam, I want you to possess um, volume 16, 8, 13, 19, 23. Uh, in order to form the great plane, now this is, this is interesting, the plane uh, of the human will in the divine to bind all the relations and to link in the links that have been broken by it. So everything is this plane, if you want to say, is the, is the new heavens and the new earth to bind all the relations that have been broken, to link, bring the links that have been broken. You know, we, we're supposed to be in God's image and likeness. I had to place my whole interior. I had to place my whole hidden life. I had to place all my intimate pains that are far more numerous and far more intense than my external pains that are not yet known. So God, God says, I've gotten everything ready in, relate, in redemption. Everything is ready. Uh, the interior, the, the hidden life, the intimate pains, far more numerous and intense than his external pains uh, that are not yet known. So he says, I'm getting everything ready to talk about wh what's within me, Jesus says. The saints have saw what, what came out of me, the exterior life. And he says, and this is what we've got to live. That's why you can't have anything, anything that is embraces the anything that embraces that which was not part of Jesus's exterior life. Now he says, I want you to embrace everything in my interior life that is not yet known. So he says, this plane, this plateau is ready. In order to make it known first, it was necessary for mankind to know that with my life and my passion, he could obtain forgiveness and salvation. That's the sacraments. It's necessary first that you enter into the kingdom of redemption, which is the Holy Catholic Church. It's necessary that you know that with my life, with my passion, now you can obtain forgiveness. Now you can obtain salvation. And here everybody says, I'm saved. God wants to sanctify us now. <laughs> it's not about just being saved. It's about being sanctified. A lot of people say, well, I'm saved. I don't have to worry about anything. No, it's now it's it's now we're climbing the, the steepest part of this mountain. God's going to do this. There's no way to get up there. The saints couldn't get up there. But with Jesus and Mary through Louisa, they're going to help us go up. This is this is the greatest time to ever live. It's necessary for mankind to know that with my life and my, my passion, my redemption, I. Uh, I, you could obtain forgiveness and salvation. Why? Now, he says, I want to dispose you to know how I, God, infiltrated for him. He prayed this, this, our father, may your kingdom come on earth, this dirt as it is in heaven, this dust as it is in heaven. I, Jesus said, infiltrated for him. The greatest, the most important thing, the new rising of his human will into my most holy divine will to give back to humanity 
his divine nobility, to give back to humanity the relations with my divine will, which Adam had broken with it, his state of origin, the original sin. We're going to go back now to the womb of the father. That, that, all, that all that Adam did, all his, his failure, all that the evil one has done to seduce Adam and Eve, to turn away from God, is going to stop. When the kingdom is God, it's on earth, it's in heaven, it's going to be Jesus on earth, in us, as it is in heaven. It's going to be heaven. So he says, I want you to, I want to, I want you to know how I infiltrated man for mankind. The greatest, the most important thing, the new rising of the human will into mine to give back to humanity his divine nobility, to give back to humanity the relations with my divine will, which Adam had broken, and with it going back to our origin. This is, this is, this, we haven't seen anything yet. We haven't seen anything yet. Now, my daughter, if my eternal wisdom disposed that my mother, the one celestial creature, the holiest of all, would prepare the seed for my holy divine will, which I formed the plane of the new rising of man in my supreme will, now through another creature, Louisa, by letting her enter into my divine dwelling, she was born of original sin. Now she's returning to the eternal dwelling of God, binding her human will to mine, uniting her to all of my acts. I make her whole interior rise again. See, he's, he's bringing humanity back to where Adam was before the fall. But even more than that, it's the true life of Jesus, the new Adam, the true life of Mary, the new Eve. Her whole interior will rise again in the eternal son of my divine will. Think of the book that was written in the Vatican, the son of my divine will, Luisa Picaretta. The field of this plane, back to the human generations so that whoever wants it can enter into it. To place himself in, in uh, the, the relationship with God, the will of his creator. We can re-enter to where Adam was before the fall, to re-enter the true life of the new Adam and of the new Eve. How? God says, I've got everything ready, what I've given to Louisa. Now, those that love Francis and become Franciscans, I mean, you've given up your will, if you want to say, to listen to the will of Francis. If those that were Benedictines, given up your will to listen to the will of Benedict. Give, give those who are Dominicans, give it up your will to the will of Dominic. This is more than that. It's to enter into the will of God, the one that Jesus possessed, the one that Mary possessed, the one that they gave to Louisa. This is not about a religious thing. It's not about becoming a saint. It's about re, the, the saving of the human generations. Jesus keeps telling us this. By him 16, 11, 15, 19, 23, it was necessary that man comprehend the goods of the kingdom of redemption first. That means to be a good Catholic, it's necessary. By him 1 through by him 10 is how to become a Catholic, how to become a saint. So as to dispose him to comprehend the good of the fia voluntas tua on earth as it is in heaven to begin to understand the meaning of the Our Father. May your kingdom come and reign in this dust on earth, this dust as it is in heaven. The same would happen also with you. If at the beginning, when I, God, speak to you, I had spoken to you about my divine will, you, have not, you would not have understood. He says, if, if, you're, if you're not Catholic, if you're not a good Catholic, you're not going to understand anything. You haven't put into practice the, the basic truths of the Catholic faith. He says, if, if, if you want this gift of the divine will, what is it? He talks about Our Lady, Catholic. He talks about the Pope, Catholic. He, ta he talks about the sacraments, Catholic. He talks about the universal life, the Catholic life. You would not have understand. When, when people say, well, I really don't understand what Jesus is saying. 
It's basically, Jesus says, because you haven't become Catholic. You might be Catholic in name, but you, 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 you don't know what I'm speaking. You, you would not have understood. You can't understand the divine will unless you become Catholic. That's why volume one through volume 10 is to be Catholic. I know so many people that say, oh, I want to read volume 20 through volume 36, receiving the divine inheritance of the Father. Well, if you're not Catholic, you're spinning your tires in mud. You're not going to go anywhere. You have to get into the, what the faith is about. What's our dogma and doctrine about? Catholic is essential to live in the divine will. All those who are not Catholic, who are reading the divine will, they're going, you know, I, he keeps on talking about the Eucharist. I don't have Eucharist. He keeps talking, talking about the queen of heaven and earth. I don't have her. They keep on talking about penance. I don't have that. And they begin to understand, I have to become Catholic. Everyone's going to become Catholic. That's the universal life that Adam lost. The Catholic life, the universal life. God is going to, what's coming back? This new and divine way of holiness is to really live the life. Read the last chapter of volume 24. Everyone is going to be Catholic. My will is the language of heaven. And it begins there where all the other sciences, all the other virtues end. My divine will is queen that dominates everything and crowns everyone in such a way that before the sanctity of my divine will, all the other virtues shrink and tremble. That's what's coming back. You, you hear about the earth shaking. It's going to shake when, when we see what God is going to bring about. We're going to be shaking with joy and shaking with, you are God. <laughs> Such a way that before the sanctity of my divine will comes to earth, all the other virtues will shrink and tremble. This is why I, God, wanted to act as your teacher, Louisa. The alphabet first, the, 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 the dogma and doctrine of our faith first, to dispose your intellect so that I can move on to act as your celestial and divine teacher who only knows the language of the fatherland, the language of heaven, who only knows the highest science that my holy divine will contains. First, I had to remove from you the tastes for anything human because the human will has this poison. It makes one lose the taste for the divine will. That's what happened to Adam. His human will came into power and he wanted to obey Eve rather than God. He lost the taste for holiness, for, for living in divinity. So in order for you to enjoy the taste of my most holy divine will alone, I am attentive not to let you taste anything else. So what is he doing? He's stripping from us everything that is human. Our friends are disappearing. Our neighbors are disappearing. Our family is disappearing. Our hobbies are disappearing. Our sports are disappearing. We're losing the taste for anything that's not divine will. He says, I am attentive to not let you taste anything else. That I, God, may dispose you to receive the most sublime lessons about my most holy divine will. He says, I've given you the book of heaven. And as you read this, nothing else becomes as, as important as this. You're, you're learning the language of heaven. Every time you read, you're, you're more fluent with this language of heaven. He says, I want you to receive these lessons that I, God, am teaching you. That's, that's the book of heaven. We're going through one of his lessons now about disposition. If this was necessary for you, so much more for the whole church, Jesus says. It's necessary for you, Louisa, so much more for the whole church, to which I had to make known the minor things first. That's our dogma and our doctrine. The sacraments and sacramentals, the private revelations of Lourdes, of Fatima, of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, of uh, the Divine divine Mercy, uh, all that's out there. When you go to the shrines, when you go to the shrine of Our Lady of Lourdes, when you go to the shrine of Our Lady of Fatima, when you go to the shrine of Our Lady of America, watch what happens. 
This is the minor things that God is teaching us first. Why? To prepare us for the greatest of all, all the knowledges that is my most holy divine will. He saved the best for last. Volume 16, 11, 28, 19, 23. So the supreme will that it was offended when Adam left the supreme will, wanted to, wanted to be repaid by Jesus himself in each and every act of my human will, Jesus says. It inflicted a cross upon me, Jesus says. And even though together with the cross, I received all the goods rejected by all of humanity, I received them back, Jesus says, as human, as God, in order to keep deposited within me for the time when the soul would dispose herself. This, he says, I, I've hang, hung onto this for 2,000 years until Louisa. The time for when Louisa would dispose herself to receive into her acts the encounter with my most holy divine will. He says, in spite of this, I could not exempt myself from feeling the intense pain of so many crosses. Look at me. Jesus says, look at me. Your crucifix is very, very important. When you go to adoration, Jesus says, look at me. Eucharistic adoration isn't there for reading a book. Look at me, Jesus says. And in my interior, how many billions of crosses my holy humanity contained. And if I wanted to tell you of the cross that my divine will gave me, I should braid them all with the acts of all of humanity. Make them present to you and let you touch with your own hands how my divine will, demanding fair satisfaction, inflict on me the cross upon cross. This is why I want you all in my divine will, to make known what this divine will has done, what this divine will made me suffer, what this divine will wants to do. Listen to what he says. He says, he says, I want you in, in my, I want you all in my divine will to make known what this divine will has done, what the divine will made me suffer what the divine will wants to do. It's all because of the cross of Jesus. And this is why you are marked with many crosses of light because your cross, your life has been in my divine will that has changed everything into light in order to dispose you to be the true newborn of my divine will. This he's talking to Louisa and he's also talking to us, but Louisa. She possesses this. To whom I, God, shall entrust the divine secrets. I shall entrust the divine joys. I shall entrust the divine sorrows to as to a faithful daughter, Luisa, who, uniting herself to my acts and my mother's acts, may open the heavens to make it descend upon earth to make the divine well known, received, and loved. That's Louisa. Thank you, Jesus, for Louisa. Her crosses, and they were many, changed into light. She is the true newborn of the divine will. She possesses the divine secrets, the divine joys, the divine sorrows of this great gift of the divine will. Why? She has united herself to Jesus and Mary's acts. She, Louisa, has opened heaven. She's the firstborn to make the divine will descend upon earth to the firstborn to make us know, make us know the divine will, love the divine will, and possess the divine will. And we thank God for Louisa yet. Volume 16, 12, 4, 1923. Having to form the kingdom of my divine will, it is necessary that another creature, Louisa Picaretta, be known to whom the true reigning of my divine will must have its origin, must have the true reigning and the beginning of the divine will. Who is she? 
how much he says who she is who she is she possesses the origin the beginning of the divine law she starts again where the human race is supposed to be louisa is the mother of the second generation of the children of light adam was the father of the first generation of the children of light and he failed jesus comes to earth mary comes to earth to begin again the abcs of this universal life the catholic faith which louisa possessed that's why the bishops and the priests are always around louisa her job is to give this gift to the priests so that the priests can feed the people with this first bread these great things are coming everyone's going to be catholic this is who she is. How much Jesus says, I have loved Louisa. How I have sacrificed Louisa, sacrificed Louisa for everyone and for each one. In a word, everything that my divine will has deposited and poured into her, Louisa. She's the source of this. Why? She possesses the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary. She's the newborn, the firstborn. Get to know Louisa. Get to know Louisa. Have a picture of Louisa in your house. Get to know her. Great things are coming through Louisa. Volume 16, 114, 1924. The I offer my blood, I offer my flesh torn to shreds. I let myself be stripped, not only my garments, but my skin to be able to pay the price, to satisfy for the crime of Adam's nakedness. I pour, poured out so much blood in this sacred mystery of Christ crucified that in no other did I pour so much. So much has to be enough to cover Adam, cover all of humanity with a second garment, a garment of blood. Didn't that, isn't that what the, the, the Jews said? Let his blood cover us and our children. That's what we should be praying every day. May your blood cover me like a second garment, a garment of blood to cover Adam again and all of humanity and then warm him, wash him, dispose him to receive the royal garment of my most holy divine will. We're washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Pray that often. Wash me, wash my family, wash my friends, wash my neighbors, wash my nation, wash the world with your precious blood, Lord. You've done this once for all. Cover us so that we can receive again the royal garment of living in the divine will. By M16, 2 8, 1924. It is necessary that you, Louisa, come before everyone. See, she's the firstborn. After you have come forward, you shall make a turn in our divine will, and go behind everyone. Who's going to teach us? Louisa. You shall place them as though on your lap, Louisa. You shall bring them all back into our divine womb. You see where we're going? We are going to be born again. And then seeing them covered with your acts, Louisa, done in our most holy divine will, shall welcome them with more love, shall feel more disposed to bind our holy divine will again with humanity so that humanity may return back to its full dominion of living in the divine will. That's what's coming. Why is there doom and gloom? Why is there worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, and sin? Because we don't believe this. We haven't heard it yet. Even though we've been reading, we haven't heard it. Jesus is trying to get us ready. Jesus is trying to get us ready for this new and divine way of holiness. He really is. Volume 16, 22, 1924. Louisa, it is necessary that I place the yeast of my divine will, that I form the preparation, that I, God, lay the foundations that will be the highest accord between you, Louisa, and me and my mother. 
Jesus said in the Old Testament, in the the Testament, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees. It is death. There's no life there. But he says, the most important thing to me, Jesus says, is the yeast. This yeast is this gift of the divine will. He says, I'm forming, I'm preparing, I'm laying the foundations of this highest accord between you, Louisa, and me, between my interior acts and yours, Louisa in order to open the doors to new divine graces, to new divine currents of life, to new divine uh, disposition to the supreme majesty, to conceive the greatest grace that is God's will be known upon earth as it is in heaven, in the midst of creatures, with its full dominion, as its full dominion has in heaven. Jesus is saying, I'm, I've done everything. I've died on the cross with, and I, my mother was with me on Calvary to bring the kingdom of redemption. Now I'm going to bring the kingdom of sanctification, new currents of love to destroy, to dispose the human majesty, to conceive the greatest grace that his will be known on earth as it is in heaven and that humanity live again in this full dominion as the saints live in heaven. Volume 16. 5, 23, 20, 24. The more the soul makes her human will one with that of her creator, the more complete, the more perfect her adoration is. It's giving you a clue of how to be in front of the Blessed Sacrament. You want true adoration? You want complete adoration? You want perfect adoration? Your human will has to be dissolved in the divine will. Your human will has to be that drop of water that the priest puts in the chalice filled with wine. It fuses and diffuses. That drop of water becomes wine. The more the soul makes her human will one with God, dissolving, fusing yourself, the more complete and perfect your adoration will be. Wait till you see how you're going to fall in love with our Eucharistic Lord. When you look at him in the monstrance, And if the human will is not one with the divine, even more, if it is far away from God, it cannot be called adoration. But it it can be called a shadow, a colorless shade that leaves it not even a trace of the divine. But if the human will is not disposed to receive the kiss of the union with the supreme will, instead of adoration, you are producing insult and scorn. God is expecting more from us. He says, if if the human will is not disposed to say yes to God, to receive the kiss of the union with the supreme fiat, this is the this is why Jesus calls heaven the wedding feast. This is why he says, I'm going to go away for a short time, but I'm going to come back to take you with me so that where I am, you can be with me in my father's house. Instead of adoration, if we don't have this desire to live in the divine will, it's really insults and scorn. Volume 16, 529, 1924. Louisa, your life can be called a continuous pain of losing me and a continuous joy of acquiring me. Here, here we see the sorrow and the, and the ecstasy. She, when she didn't see Jesus, she says, I'm not alive. I can't breathe. The continuous pain. But when she saw Jesus, continuous joy, heaven on earth, He says, but between the pain and the loss and the joy of reacquiring me when she saw him again, how many surprises have I not given you? That's the book of heaven. How many things have I not told you? That's the book of heaven. It was pain and the painful martyrdom of losing me that prepared you, that disposed you to hear the sublime lessons of my most holy divine will. In fact, how many times it seems to you that you had lost me. And while you were immersed in your own harrowing pain, I, Jesus, would come back to you, Louisa, with one more beautiful lessons on my most holy divine will. And I, Jesus, would make new joys of acquiring me come back to dispose you once again to the piercing pain of my absence. We don't go through that. He offers us every day, come with me, spend spend an hour with me. And we bring a book along to read. 
He wants us to fall in love with him. So he says, I can say that the pain of remaining without me has given birth in you to the effects, the value, the knowledges, the foundations that are written in the book of heaven, where you find my divine will. He says, the suffering that you've gone through, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional suffering that you've gone through has prepared you, has given birth in you to embrace the effects, the value, the knowledge, the foundations of my holy divine will as you read, as you study, as you put this into practice. Volume 17, 620, 1924. See then how in order for my divine will to come and to reign in your soul, this you, your soul, must Enclose within yourself all that my holy humanity did. You see what Jesus is saying? You have to become Catholic. Reflecting everything that his holy humanity did. And if other creatures have shared, the saints have shared this, it is only in parts the fruits of my redemption according to the dispositions. This creature, Louisa, shall centralize them all within herself in order to form the noble cortege for my divine will, and my divine will shall centralize in Louisa the love that gives to, that wants from all humans in order to be able to receive the love of each of all humans and of each and every one of them. So it's Louisa who has done this for us. It is Louisa who has done this for us. And our God is asking us, are you ready? Are you ready for more? Are you ready for this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Are you ready to receive the divine inheritance of the Father? Are you ready? Great things are right around the corner. There's nothing to be upset about. What you're happening, what you see happening in the world has to happen. God is purifying the earth, purifying the church, purifying the world, because he says this gift is so magnificent that we're not worthy of it yet. Volume 17, 716, 1924. Do you know in whom I can place all the goods that came out of me in creation? In the one who makes my divine will her own. That's Louisa. Because it alone gives Louisa the capacity, the appreciation, the true dispositions in order to receive the goods of her God and administers to Louisa the requital of the gratitude, the thanksgiving, and the love that the soul is obliged to give for the gifts that come from so much goodness uh, that she has received. So he says, Jesus says, Louisa, now I want to dispose humanity again to receive this divine will of mine, but it's necessary that I return to breathe on him again, this rule of God, this breath of God, this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's coming, so that my breath may put to flight the darkness, the infections from humanity, and may render active the particles, this breath of our divinity, that we will infuse in him, we infused in him, in Adam, in creating Adam. I want to bring back what I did in the beginning. So you've learned the basic ABCs, the Catholic faith, the dogma and doctrine. He says, now get ready for this breath that's coming. I'm going to bring humanity back to what I planned from the beginning. This is going to be the second generation of the children of light. How I wish to see mankind beautiful, to see mankind restored, just as I created Adam. And my divine will alone can work this great prodigy. No one else can do this. This is why I want to breathe on you again. Breathe in my breathing. Take a deep breath. Jesus is breathing in your breathing. He says, I want to breathe on you that you may receive this great good, that my divine will reign in you and give you back all the goods, all the rights, and give that it, the divine will gave in the creation of Adam. We haven't seen anything yet. A new and divine way of holiness is, is very close. Volume 17, 9, 18, 1924. To live in my divine will is to reign as, as true sons and daughters of God. To do my divine will is to be submitted to my orders. So he says there's a difference between what the saints have done 
and what I'm going to do for you in the divine will. The first state, the living in the divine will, is to possess. The second state, as the saints had, had, is to receive my orders and to execute them. To live in my divine will is to make my divine will your own, as if you own this. And it is to dispose of it. To do my will is to hold it as will of God, not as one's own thing, nor can one dispose of it as you want. To live in my divine will, Jesus says, is to live with one single will, the prime act of God that is of God. This is what God has planned. And this is what God is asking us. He's asking us to get ready for this new and divine way of holiness. Again, how glorious is this? So we'll be back in uh, 15 minutes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.